These are two completely different fan designs. The axial fan are designed to move a lot of air at low pressure, meanwhile the radial or blower fans move low amounts of air at high pressure. So what this means is that radial fans can better force the air through the small ducts. But if that is the case, why there are plenty of enthusiast designs and even some companies that use a more traditional axial fan to cool the print? Is this straight incompetence? Or is there something we don't know? Well, this is why we're going to perform multiple tests and find out. Just like we're going to find out, the sponsor of this video, the PCB Way. They offer professional PCB prototyping, assembling, CNC machining and 3D printing services. But the coolest part from a maker's perspective is that there is an active community with all sorts of custom electronic projects. And if you like what you see, you can quickly and easily order the PCB of a project. Before, if you're interested, check it out and also get 5 bucks off for your first purchase with a link in the video description. So to test the theory, I designed two identical ducts to fit each fan type. As we want to test a realistic scenario of filament cooling, it gets narrow in the middle and only then widens up to measure the outcoming airspeed. And the first test results were, let's just say, even extremely surprising to me. The axial fan basically made no airflow with this type of duct compared to the radial fan. And I'm not exaggerating. This looks like a worst case scenario. So we have to dig deeper. And to do that, I designed another type of duct. This time offsetting the narrow part right below the blades, giving probably a best case scenario to directly force the air through. And do you think that improved the airflow? Well, yes, and it improved substantially. Now we're getting only 30% less airspeed, but also with 25% less power compared to the radial fan. So great, then it's a viable option, right? But I'm afraid that is not as simple as yes or no. Please let me explain. You see, we're not looking here for a fair comparison. If we did, we would compare the same size fans. The whole point of modifying the print cooling system in the first place is to get better performance no matter the fan type, because that gives better printed results on overhangs and we can print faster without turning small objects into blobs. The only other reason is to lower the noise, but using an axial fan instead of a radial doesn't really make it much quieter, it's just a different pitch noise. And some designs can even make it worse. And considering that axial fan pressure heavily drops the speed, I doubt that even Nocta fans would be a good idea here, as they operate 1500 RPM lower compared to my tested ones. But the biggest issue when using axial fans in this scenario is how it is easy to make a useless cooling design. These fans are not designed to force the air through the small ducts and require better understanding of fluid dynamics to make it even somewhat viable. The airflow out of the duct can be unpredictable and hard to control. And I'm not trying to sound like I'm an expert of this complex field or anything. I'm just trying to warn you that instead of an upgrade, you can end up with a downgrade. Meanwhile, when using radial fans, you already have pressurized air coming through a small air that is extremely easy to force through almost any type of duct. The fewer the bends and shorter the path, the better results you'll get. These are very basic principles and it's not hard to execute into a good working design. This is why it was not as simple as saying yes or no. But now you know that yes, it is a viable option, but it is a bad option when you have specifically designed fans for this purpose. And if your ultimate goal is the silence, then it is way better just to use two fans and run them on lower speed instead. Just be sure that your offer the printer doesn't produce that annoying fan PW noise when you lower it. But if it does, then make sure to subscribe, as we will be making a simple part to heavily suppress it. From this point, I will be heavily focusing on everything for the printing related. Projects, improvements and tests that are not covered or needs to be covered in a better way with relevant data. There are so many simple things that I want to test and know the definitive answer to. I hope this video helped you decide on your 3D printer schooling upgrade. If it did, please give it a like. And if you want to contribute to my work, consider becoming a patron. That's all for me and we'll see you next time.